whether to use get or post method in your forms. So I've seen this happen quite often. Someone creates a form, they put in the fields that they need, and then they hit submit. And on the PHP side where they're capturing that information, they're not getting any results back. And typically it's a method problem. So in the form tag, you have methods equal to post or get. And on the receiving side, you're not capturing that information correctly. So in this video, I wanna just create a short form uh, that shows you guys what the differences are and how to capture them in PHP because I get a lot of comments about my forms not working I get emails my forms not working can you help me with what's going on and these are develop you know new developers new beginner developers here on the ideapro.io we have the code open and we're on the website here we are going to create a new page in the public HTML and we're going to just call it form.php and we're going to save that and that's our public HTML so ideapro.io slash form.php all right so now of course there's nothing there because it's blank so we're going to create a form and it's going to be very very simple so let's just do form and our action is going to be form test.php. Now that's on the same, that file is going to be on the same um, directory. So we don't have to put anything before it, you know, open to a different directory or anything like that. You could, uh, that action could be a complete URL, but we're just gonna make it form hyphen test.php. All right, so then in our public HTML, we're gonna create a new file, and that's going to be form-test.php. Okay, so we're gonna save that. And then come over here, we're gonna put in some fields. Input, and that type is gonna be text, and the name is going to be full name. Let's make it full name. And value is equal to nothing, because we're not filling that value. We're gonna do a placeholder of your full name all right so then we're going to come down to the next field and we're going to do type email name is email address let's make these different placeholder is your email address all right we're going to put a break after each one of these because we're, we're not doing any real styling or anything like that which is very very simple uh, html so then our last one is going to be um, a submit button. Name is equal to submit your information. And the value is going to be submit your name and email. Okay, and that button is just gonna be a default button. All right, we're gonna save that. We're gonna come over to our page and we're gonna look at that. So really easy, your full name, your email address, and then our big submit button. We're actually gonna change these to double breaks and even leave one after that submit button there. All right, so now we separate those out a little bit. All right, so now, right now, if we submit this, it's, it's gonna go to our uh, thank you page or our form test page, but we're not doing anything on that side, right? So, and we're not giving it a method up here. So if you don't put in a method, it will automatically use the get method. And it, I'll show you that really quick. So we're gonna refresh this and we're gonna put in Joshua and then we're gonna do josh at ideapro.com. All right, submit your name and information. So it's taking us to this form hyphen test.php page. And then it says question mark full name is equal to Joshua and email address is equal to Josh at Idea Pro and submit your information is equal to submit your info, your info and email. All right, so that is the get method. And so if we come in and we put in method is equal to get and we go back to our form and we refresh and we say joshua josh at ideapro 
job. There we go. And we submit that information. It still takes us the exact same thing. It says form test, full name, all that information is in the URL. All right. So now we're going to do post method. So post, and we're going to come back over here to our form. We're going to go back and we're going to refresh this. And so now we're going to put in Joshua and Josh, come on, Josh at ideapro.com. And we're going to submit that. And now it's taking us to form hyphen test.php. So that is a good example of what the difference between Git and post is. Git puts everything into the URL. And so if you're creating a search bar, you might want to put that into the URL so that if someone refreshes the page, that information is already there in the Git. It doesn't lose the post that they did, right? If they want to copy that and send it to a friend so that they can see what they searched for, Git is a great way to do that. If you do it as post, they can't copy this URL and send the search results that they've found to a friend because it's not going to be in those in the URL. Now, if you have a long form, I would say three or more fields, definitely use post and not get. If you have a text area, you know, that is included in your form, don't use get. Use post method. And the reason is, is because that URL can only be so long. I mean, it's pretty, it can be pretty long, but you don't want that passing through in the URL. You want to use post. All right. So let's go back and to our code here. And so now on the test.php, we're actually going to do some stuff here. All right. So since we're using the post method, we're going to show that post details in an array on the page. All right. So the way we can do that is we can do show a show array, which this is my pre-formatted um, snippet that I use with Sublime. And if you break this down, this is what it looks like. This pre-formatted word doesn't really matter. So this is what we're, this is kind of the breakdown of it. It's just pre-tags before this print R. Okay. So then print R and then we're going to do underscore post. And that's how you get the post from the form submission, right? So if we come back over here, we're going to refresh this page and we're going to say Joshua and Josh at ideapro.com. And now we're going to hit submit. And so that is the form submission. It even gives us the submit your information button. Now, if we come back over to our PHP and we change this to get and save, and we come back and we refresh this page, continue with the form submission, our array is going to be blank because we're now asking for the get information, but we used the post method. So if we go back to our form and change it to get, we'll come over here and refresh and do Joshua and Josh at ideapro.com and submit. Now we have that information here in the URL and in the get results. Okay. So the other thing that you can do, if you don't know what method is being used, you can use the underscore request. Okay. And so now we're on our form. We're using the get method. We're going to come back to the form. We're going to refresh just so you know, it's on the get. And then we're going to do Josh at ideapro.com and submit. And so now, even though we're using the Git, you can see it here in the URL, it's still coming through as because we're using underscore request. Now, if we go back to our form and we change this to the post method and we come over, go back, refresh, we can look here and see that inspect this and see our form tag down here. Let's bring this up a little bit. What's new? I don't care. All right. If we see our form tag, we can see method is equal to post here. All right. So we can do Joshua, Josh at ideapro.com and submit. And so now we're using the post method and we're still capturing that information because we're using underscore request. Now, 
it is very, very wise to not use underscore request. It's important to know what's being submitted and whether it's Git and whether it's post. And the reason is, is because now that you have this, anyone can push information to this page using the get method or post method, either way. And them not knowing whether you're using get or post, you will, you will see this information with using request no matter what. So it's better to know what you're using as the form and then submit and grab that. It's also wise to make sure that you're only validating fields. So if we, so see now we have post, it only validate the fields that are coming through on the form. So you got full name, email address, and submit your information. You don't want to put a basic code in there that will submit to the database or even email someone, right? If you wanted to email someone, you could do the, you know, create a two is equal to, you know, josh at ideapro.com. And then the subject is equal to just testing. And then the message is equal to, and you create a string and then you say for each dollar sign underscore post as dollar sign key, dollar sign V. And then in here you say dollar sign message concatenate equals the, you know, key, value like that. Then you come down here and you do the mail function and say to subject message. That is really bad because now if we're using post, if we're using get, or if we're using request, anything that's submitted will now go through this message and into the mail function to submit that submit that. So it's always good to know exactly what you're looking for. So you can say name is equal to dollar center square post. Uh, what is the it's full name, right? Full name. And then you can do email address. So email is equal to email address. And then, so, and that's how we're using. So then you can put that into the message and get rid of this. Thank you. And use this email address. We received your information, blah, 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 whatever. So it's much safer to know exactly what you're um, getting. And then before you submit this stuff into a database, it's very, very good to sanitize that information to make sure that people haven't put any malicious code or anything like that into the database. That depends on how you're, what database you're using and what functions you're using to add it to a database. So anyway, a little bit longer video than what I wanted to make. I wanted to just create uh, just a quick video to show you guys the difference between post and get and when to use them because using get, of course, if you're, it's a big form, you don't want to pass all that information into the search bar if or the address bar if you're using if you're building a search then you want that more than likely to be in the search then the address bar so that someone can copy that and paste it and send it to a friend and they get the same results that that person got okay hope you like this video thank you for watching thank you for subscribing love all you guys i'm so glad to have 7,500 subscribers on my channel. Looking forward to making more videos and growing the channel even more. So thank you very much and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.